39th lecture on digital circuits. We shall not be able to do much of digital circuits, so we will learn a bit of um, Boolean algebra in the last two lectures, 39th and 40th, but the basics only. All we have seen is that a diode as well as a transistor can act as a switch and a diode circuit is, if you have a diode like this with let us say a resistance and a battery, let us say 5 volt battery and some resistance R sub C, then we have shown in the previous class that if this is high, if this is high, higher than 5 volt, then this will also be high, whereas if this is low that is less than 5 volt, then this diode shall conduct and this, this diode is ideal, there shall be 0 volt drop and that shall also be low. The high level, the high level is characterized by a digital or Boolean 1 and low level is given the status of Boolean 0, logic 0, 1 and 0. There are philosophical interpretations of this. In fact, the Boolean logic arose in philosophy to start with Western philosophy. 1 is for true, 0 is for not true or false. But in our context, uh, since a circuit is either on or off, that is the voltage level at every at each point in a digital circuit is either high or low. If it is high, it is termed status 1 if it is low it is term status 0. The low level, the low level can have a range, can have a range of let us say 0 to uh, 0.6. The high level can also have a range maybe between 4 and 5.5 all right and therefore the exact level is not important. What is important is whether it is high or low. In a similar manner if we take a transistor circuit, a transistor <coughs> Then you know that if VBE, if this voltage is high, if this voltage is high, then this voltage shall be low. If this is high, then the transistor will conduct heavily, the collector current would be large and therefore this voltage would be VCC minus the drop in the collector resistance and therefore this voltage shall be low and if we overdrive the transistor, then we shall be, we shall be operating in this region of transistor characteristics which is the saturation region and this voltage is usually taken as 0.2 for silicon and therefore the low level for a transistor switch is approximately 0.2 volts. On the other hand, if this voltage is low, lower than 0.7 the threshold, then the transistor does not conduct and therefore this voltage this voltage shall be high. If the transistor does not conduct, then the total VCC shall appear at this output point and therefore the voltage shall be high. You notice that there is an inversion in the transistor circuit. That means if the input is high, output is low. If the input is low, the output is high. And in general, if the input is denoted by the Boolean variable capital A, then the output is the complement of A. That is, if this is high, then this is low. If this is low, then this is high. Capital A can take on a Boolean variable, can take on two values, either 0 or 1. This is the basis of digital circuits and all that you see in the modern world, whichever walk of life you are in, computers are a and computers operate with these two basic components. There are modifications to make the switching speed that is from low to high, switching speed large or small, interconnection lengths also decide whether switching shall occur properly or not. Those are matters of detail and the, <coughs> the digital circuits are made in the form of chips, very small, uh, they occupy very small space and therefore they are very popular and the other reason is the accuracy accuracy that is the actual voltage level is not important. What is important is whether it is low or it is high. Naturally, the arithmetic that is to be used for analysis and synthesis of such circuits 
because there are only two levels, 0 and 1, the most eminent kind of mathematics is the binary arithmetic, the binary arithmetic in which there are only two digits, namely 0 and 1. Therefore, decimal 0 is 0, decimal 1 is 1, decimal 2 is 1, 0, decimal 3 is 1, 1, decimal 4 shall be 1, 0, 0, and so on. Okay? And you know how to convert a given binary number into a decimal number. All right? A given binary number, for example, 1, 0, 1, 1, what you will do is multiply 1 by 2 to the 0, 1 by 2 to the 1, 0 by 2 to the 2, and 1 by 2 to the 3, and add all of them. That is the binary. Given a decimal number, let us say 235, to convert it into binary, you know what you do. You go on dividing by 2 and note down the remainders. Then you arrange the remainders in the reverse fashion. On the other hand, if this is a fraction, let us say 0.235, you go on multiplying by 2 and collect the carries, not remainders, collect the carries. For example, the first multiplication will give a carry of 0. Second multiplication also shall give a carry of 0. Third one, 1. And therefore, this will be point zero zero one and so on. For converting a decimal fraction to a binary fraction, the carries are arranged as they appear. On the other hand, if it is an integer number, if it is an integer number, then the remainders are arranged in the reverse order. Okay. These are known to you. Most of the discussion that we are going to do today, in fact, are known to you. And <clears throat> if we arrange two diodes like this, two diodes like this, and this is connected to plus 5 volt through a resistance R, all right, then <clears throat> obviously there is a ground there is a ground because voltages have to have two terminals. Voltage is a potential difference, it has to have two terminals. This 5 volt battery has a ground. Then you see that if the state of this input is called A and if the state of this input is called B, then the state of the output which we shall call C shall be determined by the states of A and B. And you see that C shall be high, C shall be high when both A and B are high. And this is represented by the so called truth table as you already know, represented by the so called truth table. And the possibilities are A and B, both can be 0, this can be 0, 1, this can be 1, 0, or this can be 1, 1. These are the only two, only four possibilities, all right. And C is high only when both are 1, both are 1, so all the rest must be 0. And this in terms of Boolean algebra is represented by C equal to A and B. This is called an AND operation and this is an AND circuit. This is an AND operation and the circuit that you see is an AND and this is usually represented by A dot B dot stands for the AND operation. But for brevity when you have to write it again and again we usually omit the dot. All right. Even if it is omitted when A and B are written uh, adjacent to each other, it means that A is ended with B, all right. This is the AND operation. This is one of the basic logical operations. The second basic logi logical operation is OR and the circuit is very similar except that the diodes are reversed. The diodes are reversed and there is no battery needed, there is simply a resistance needed this is C, this is A, and this is B. And you can see that C shall be high when 
either A or B is high. When A is high, the diode is a short circuit, this diode is a short circuit irrespective of what this diode is and the high voltage appears across C or when B is a high, then this diode conducts, it is a short circuit, so the high voltage appears at C. When both of them are high, then also it is high, but if both of them are low, then obviously C shall be at 0 potential that shall be low and therefore the truth table is once again the possibility of the variables are 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and the output shall be 1 when either or both are 1 and therefore this is the only situation in which it is 0, all others are 1. And in terms of Boolean algebra, this operation is represented by the plus sign. Now we cannot omit the plus sign. Okay? This plus stands for logical <coughs> OR operation. So it is A or B, A or B and this is a simple diode logic. Usually one does not use diodes to realize such gates, one uses transistors. And in, in various kinds of families, the most popular family at the present time is the MOS family, metal oxide semiconductor which we have not discussed in the class. Metal oxide semiconductor because they occupy the least amount of space. But as far as speed is concerned, now <coughs> speed is important here. For example, if A is high, all right, then C is high. Suppose from high, suppose from high A is reduced to 0 how quickly C can follow this operation? Obviously, it cannot. Why? How quickly C can follow? Because if A is high, then the diode conducts, which means that the, what does diode conduction mean? It means that the space charge barrier, the charges come close together. All right. So, the diode conducts. Now, as soon as the voltage is withdrawn, the charges cannot recede instantaneously, they take some time. All right. And this time is the so called, determines the so called speed of operation or the speed of the circuit. And in high speed digital computers as they are at the present time, diodes, diode logic is out of fashion. Diode logic cannot be used. We are using it simply to illustrate the basic circuit to understand the phenomenon of the OR operation. And the third basic gate, one is first is AND, second is OR and the third basic gate is the NOT gate or the inverter which is simply a transistor, a transistor in which in order to make sure that a low voltage, that there is no ambiguity in the low or high operation what we do is besides R sub C, what we do is we use a resistance here and bias the base negatively, all right. Maybe 1 volt is good enough, all right. So that only when, well usually this is also set at the same value as plus Vcc, all right. We will call this a Vb, some voltage Vb. Then you see this voltage has to has to overcome the negative voltage in order that the diode conducts, all right. And as I have already told you, if this is A, then this is A bar and this is called a NOT gate or an inverter. One can make <coughs> a combination of these three basic gates that is AND or and not to be able to derive more complicated gates. You understand why they are called gates because they either allow uh, a high level to pass or they do not allow. So, they are called gates, logic gates or digital gates. All right. One can make combination of this. For example, if an OR is followed by a NOT, Well, the operation is NOR, all right. Excuse me, sir. 
क्या भाई यस पर भी yeah okay so this kind of a circuit drawing will not be valid in the case of digital circuits we'll have to give symbols this is why i drew it to be able to create a confusion this will not this will not hold in the case of digital circuit we must draw a symbol we must indicate the number of inputs for a not gate there is only one input and there is one output and therefore this type of circuit shall not be valid our representation the universal representation or i triple e representation is for an and gate this is the representation this is and to make it specific that this is and sometimes a dot is put here sometimes it's not needed for an or gate the input line is curved and the two the two side lines are also curved and there are two inputs this is called an or gate so if this is a and this is b then the output is the anded form of a and b whereas in the or operation to make it specific that it is or sometimes a plus sign is put but whenever you see this peculiar shape well you know it is an or and if this is a this is b then the output is a or b for a not gate one input and one output and this is usually represented by a triangle a triangle is used for an amplifier in analog circuits in digital circuits it represents an inverter triangle with a dot this dot represents complementing or inversion all right a nor gate shall be represented by an or to start with it takes two out two inputs a b and then an inverter so this is a or b and this is a or b complement this is a nor gate and naturally <coughs> for a nor gate for a nor gate the truth table shall be a b and then a or b complement it would be simply the complement complement of the truth table <coughs> of the or gate for example 0 0 shall give you 1 0 1 shall give you 0 1 0 shall give you 0 and 1 1 shall give you 0 this is the nor gate all right i must mention here that in modern integrated circuits one does not make the manufacturers do not make all the three kinds of gates they make only a particular company makes only usually only one kind of gate it's either nor or nand n a n d and nand is and followed by a not gate and the the argument is the logic is that the production of three different or four different kinds of gates is much more costlier then producing the same gate maybe four times or five times the number because each process step in integrated circuit technology each process step variation costs you a lot of money all right and therefore companies prefer fabrication companies prefer either to manufacture nor or nand however there are companies which manufacture both nor as well as nand gates okay and nand gate as i said is an end with two inputs a and b followed by a not this is ab and this is ab bar this is a nand gate and <coughs> the truth table can be written as the complement of the end that is 0 0 shall be 1 0 1 shall be 1 1 zero obviously shall be one, and one one shall be zero. Okay, if you compare the nor and the nand, don't you see a similarity? Yes or no? Zero zero is the same. No, there is no similarity. <laughs> there is no complementarity either, nor and nand, but nevertheless. one can realize a nor function if you have only nand gates in fact 
in fact it can be shown and you try this out this must be several tutorial problems in the in the textbook that given a NAND given any number of NAND gates you can realize any other gate any other gate including a NOR gate. For example if you want to convert a NAND into let us say an inverter a NOT gate all that you do is you connect the two inputs together all right then this is a and this is a bar is there any other way that i can make it is there any other way i have a nand gate i want to make an inverter using only one <laughs> yes using only one nand gate i this is my input a what should i do with the other one of the ways is i connect it to a Pardon me? You have a 1 here, then A and 1 is A, and pardon me? A and 1 is? A and 1 is A. All right, that is it, and therefore the output shall be A bar. This is another way. All right, there are alternatives also. But anyway, the point that uh, <coughs> that is interesting is that only one type of gate suffices to realize any other function and before I <coughs> before I go further let us see the NOR gate the circuit shall be first an OR minus VB and then a NOT. Is this a NOR or uh, A or B? If either is high, then this will be high, therefore, this will be low. Yeah, this is the output shall be A or B complemented. Given a circuit, you must be able to you must be able to detect what kind of a gate is this. This is a NOR gate. All right. On the other hand, <coughs> if I want to make a NAND. If I want to make an end, all that I, I shall have to do is to reverse the two diode polarities. All right. Let us see this. <coughs> A, B. Then, do I need a negative bias here? No. I need, let me draw this circuit, then I will tell you why it is so. R, B then this require a little bit of little bit of experience to appreciate why it is so and this is connected through a diode the base is connected this is the this is a practical circuit for a NAND gate. Now why are all these paraphernalia needed why a diode and an RB needed you see when A is, when both, as I said, this is the NAND gate, when both A and B are high, then the two diodes do not conduct, all right, and therefore VCC through RB and this diode drives the transistor and the output shall be, shall be high or low? Low. low. low the output shall be low. When A and B are both low, when they are both low, what happens is both low or one low, it does not matter, right? One of them low, then this becomes approximately connected to ground. If this is an ideal diode, then it is 0 voltage drop. If it is non-ideal, as is the case in practice, if it is a practical diode, then there shall be a drop of 0.7 volt. Now, if this diode was not there, then this transistor would have conducted because 0.7 is the voltage required here. This is why another diode is inserted so that when this voltage is 0.7, this combination requires 1.4 volt to be able to conduct. Is not that right? 0.7 here and 0.7 here. So, it makes sure this diode you must understand the 
function of this diode. This diode makes sure that when one, when one or both of these trans, both of these diodes conduct, that is when A is low <coughs> or B is low or both are low, the transistor does not conduct and the output is indeed high. The transistor does not conduct and therefore the output shall be high. Is the point clear? Why a diode is needed here? It was not needed in the north circuit, all right? It was not needed in the north circuit. So this is a NAND circuit. If the diode had not been there, yes. then would it have conducted or? Yes. If the diode was not there and this is low, then this would have conducted the, this diode and because it is a practical diode, the drop across it would have been approximately 0.7. And if this drop is 0.7 from here to ground, obviously the transistor would have conducted. We want to make sure that it does not conduct, so we put another diode it will require 1.4 volt and for this diode to conduct we require 0.7 and therefore this indeed the diode indeed is needed. As an illustration of how a NAND gate can be used to realize any operation, any operation. Can you make an AND out of NAND? Yes, all that you require is another two NAND gates shall be required. One is NAND them and then another inversion. For an OR circuit, for example, where what you require is now from now on we shall represent the output of a logic circuit, digital circuit as small f, all right, function. If I want the OR operation, what I want is that f should be equal to A or B. I want to convert this into NAND type of operation. So what I do is, which we shall do a little later, we use De Morgan's theorem. What we do is A not A not B, then complement, all right. That is what we shall implement now. One not gate, one then shall be required for A bar, one for B bar and the third for, third for NAND, that is A bar, B bar, NAND. Uh, if I can draw them, I can draw them very easily. <coughs> what I have is, this is A, so this is A bar. Similarly, this is B, so this is B bar and then I put them together to a third NAND, so I shall get A bar, B bar, whole bar, which is equal to A or B. Similarly, try it out how to make other functions. Well, what is the other function left? NAND, well, AND, OR, and NOT. All the three can be realized by NAND gate. Similarly, try for with NOR. Try with NOR. NOR from NOT to OR is very simple. From NOT to AND is not difficult either. From NOR to, to, to NOT. NOR to NOT. How do you do that? same as NAND. That means you connect the two together. There is still another way. Zero. One of them is to be connected to 0. All right. <coughs> then some terms as are used. The computer science boys should be very familiar with this. A bit um, yeah, terminology is used in digital circuits. A bit is an abbreviation of binary digit, all right, this B and I T, binary digit, 1 or 0 is a bit. A word of 4 bits is called a nibble, okay, and a word of 8 bits is called a byte, all right. A word of, word means uh, a number, a binary number consisting of 8 bits. If, um, <coughs> well, you understand what we mean by word. By word, we mean the number of, uh, well, it is a binary number. It is a binary number and the number of bits making it is called the word length. What is the word length permitted by the ICL system here? 
How many bits are permitted? 32 bits, yeah. Okay. Some standard terminology, then some postulates of Boolean algebra. <coughs> postulates and theorems. The basic postulates are of course the three operations, that means or, and, and not. Okay. Or operation is 0 or 0 is 0, these are the postulates, this is what it starts from and you see this can be converted into a digital circuit either with diodes or with transistors or combinations. 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 0 and 1 or 1 is 0. Okay. Thank you. And in end, 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, and 1 and 1 is 0. Okay. All right. In the not operation, complement of 1 is 0 and the complement of 0 is 1. They look very simple, but in complicated Boolean expressions, um, sometimes one has to refer to this sometimes one has to recall the roots. But it is obvious that if I complement A and complement again, this should be the original A, all right. This is the relationship in one variable and if I, if I generalize this, this postulates, these are specific values that we have taken 0 and 1. Suppose I take a Boolean variable A which can be either 0 or 1, then its operation with the, the two bits that are available, that is if we, if we or A with 0, we shall get A, okay. A with 1, we shall get sure, not A, okay, 1. If we or A with A, we get A. And if we or A with <coughs> complement of A, it is still 1, all right. On the other hand, if we end A and 0, it would be 0, A and 1 is A, A and A, A, and A and A bar, good. And not operation, of course, there is only one that is double complement of A is A, all right. Let us take two variables now, two variables or two or more variables, okay. Two or more variables, <coughs> if we wish to write uh, such uh, rules or such uh, consequences, it will take a long, long list. So, we group them into rules or laws as they are called. One is the commutation rule, which says that the order of operation is not important. That is, whether you or A with B or B with A, it is not important, all right. They are identical. This is called commutation rule. You can bring B first and then or with A. 1 plus 1 or 0 and 0 or 1 are the same. Okay. And the other is if you end A with B, the result is the same as B ended with A. This is commutation rule. This is true in ordinary arithmetic also, decimal arithmetic also, okay. commutation. Then the second rule is association. In association rule A or B or C, there are more than two variables A or B or C, that is this operation says that B should be or with C first, then or with A. Well, this happens to be the same as if A, a is or with B and then the total is or with C or 
you can make any other combination. For example, it could be B or with A instead of A or with B. Okay. Similarly, in the case of in the case of AND operation, that is A and B and C, which indicates that B and C have to be ended first, and then the result is to be ended with A. Well, you can write as A and B and C. All right. This is the rule of association. <coughs> well, so far uh, these are all trivial and re revisions. De Morgan's the third third set of rules is given by the De Morgan's theorem, and it states that if you have an OR operation followed by a complementation, then this is complementation of the two variables and an AND operation, the two are equal. <coughs> this is one form of De Morgan's theorem, you must follow this OR operation is converted to an AND, OR is converted to an AND and the result is that both the variables have to be complemented first and the easiest proof of this is by writing the truth table. Truth table. All right, easiest proof. In fact, um, if you uh, you can't make a mistake in proof if you go by the truth table. But sometimes truth tables are very long to write, and things may be obvious. We'll we'll show examples of this. The other is that if A is ended with B, and the whole thing complemented, this is one form of De Morgan's theorem. The second is A and B the result is complemented, then this is simply OR operation between complement of A and complement of B. Once again, a AND operation is being converted to OR, but complementing is a part of De Morgan's theorem, is an inherent part of De Morgan's theorem. Whenever you want to convert one operation to the other, OR operation to AND or AND operation to OR, you must complement. Okay? And De Morgan's theorem without complementation is not valid. Okay, One has to remember this. <coughs> then the fourth set of rules are the absorption rules and these are interesting that is A or A and B, A or A and B is simply equal to A and the proof here is very simple. A can be written as A and 1 <coughs> and this can be written as A and B and by how can I do this A and 1 or B association distribution which you have not proved yet. <laughs> okay, But anyway 1 or B 1 and therefore this is A. And the second distribution law, second absorption rule, this is 1, the second follows from this, here is an OR operation, so you replace this by AND, this OR by AND and this AND by OR, A AND A or B is equal to Why is it so? A and A is A, A and B and A plus A B is A. It takes account of the first rule and without distribution the easiest way to prove is to write the truth table. If you do not want to take distribution, okay, if you are barred from using distribution then this is what you do. You write the truth table and then the distribution finally. You could do distribution earlier. Distribution rules <coughs> are again two in number. That is, if you have A and B or C, you can write this as A and B or A and C, exactly like ordinary decimal arithmetic. However, however, there is a difference. If this is replaced by OR, this is first form. The second form is this is replaced by OR and this is replaced by AND then this is equal to A or B and A or C. And the proof of this easier proof 
is to go from here to the left. If you expand this, you get A A, A C, B A, B C. A A is A absorption. A plus A C is A. A plus B A is, and therefore this is A. Plus B. Is that okay? All right. Uh, <coughs> you can have fun. There are several problems in the tutorial sheet, which uh, asks you to prove that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side. The important thing is, well, you shall be able to do it blindly if you proceed by uh, truth table. But suppose there are uh, three variables, three inputs. Then how many? Uh, lines will be there in the truth table. 8, 4, 16. If it is more than 4, then you have had it. Your one page may not be able to accommodate it. It is better to look for simplification. And it is important to see which side should you start with. And this will come through experience. That is, if you work out more and more uh, problems. Now, as in analog circuits, we can have two kinds of problems. We can have analysis or we can have synthesis. All right. Logic circuit analysis means given a logic circuit, find out the output variable in terms of the input variables. Exactly that is what we do in analog circuits. Given an analog circuit, find the output in terms of the input or inputs. You can have more than one input. All right. For example, in, an, in a transistor amplifier, what do you find out? The output consists of two parts, the AC and the DC. There are two inputs. One is the DC, where is the DC? VCC and the signal. All right, there are two inputs. Okay. So, logic circuit analysis means that you want to find the output in terms of the input or inputs. All right. Another, another objective of logic circuit analysis is simplification. It just does not stop at finding f as a function of let us say the inputs a, b, c, etcetera, etcetera. It does not stop there. It is it, logic circuit analysis in, in this term is implied whether you can simplify the expression that is plus simplification. That is one might have an a, a, what do you call an immature person? Um, amateur. An amateur might have constructed a circuit which can be done with less number of gates, and therefore one should look at whether he can simplify this or not. And one of the uh, we shall illustrate this by means of a uh, specific problem. But you understand the difference between analog circuit analysis and digital circuit analysis, logic circuit analysis. Logic circuit analysis, in addition to finding the output variable, it also implies whether the output, the same output variable could be obtained from the same inputs by a simpler circuit. All right. Uh, an example, suppose we have two variables A, B and we have a series of NAND gates, one, now I let me tell you what I mean by this. and B. This means, this dot here means that a inversion has occurred to start it. For example, if I have let us say A and then I apply to an AND gate, I represent this sometimes. <coughs> it is convenient to represent it not by drawing another gate, but by, by simply doing this which means that the actual input to this gate is complement of A, not A, all right. Not A, N O T, N capital O capital T capital, not the English not, all right. Okay. So, this is, this is another gate, this is an N gate and the third is, now you see I am not bothering to draw these uh, twiddles. Whenever there is a connection, I will show it by means of a big dot like this. If there is a crossing like this, that means they are not connected to each other. Because otherwise, I will have to draw so many twiddles. I do not want to do that. 
all right and the third gate is a similar one but the inversion operation is in b okay all these three are brought to an or gate and this is what is f one can <coughs> one can very simply see that this is a b complement there is an AND gate this output is a bar b there is an AND gate with a complemented and this gate is a b bar and therefore f should be simply equal to the or between these two that is a b bar plus a bar b plus a b bar now this is as far as analysis is concerned you have obtained an expression can it be simplified well try this by de morgan's theorem this is a bar plus b bar then a bar b plus a b bar now you combine these two this is a bar and these two will give you b bar which you can write as all right and therefore all this is redundant what you could do simply with one nand gate isn't the, isn't the, that right this is a b bar and therefore all this is redundant this is the work of an amateur and you must look at it all right it uh, is very important for a company that they have expert logic circuit designers because if one is not an expert logic circuit designer the company <laughs> might go bankrupt <laughs> all right we shall have a few minutes break before we take the 40th lecture we shall assemble here again at 503 all right